Late summer, early mornings can be dead zones of the season. But those warm mornings in the shade are home to Mayfly Spinner Falls. They aren't clockwork, but if you get lucky, get up early and hit a long glide with keen eyes along the shoreline wood, you might just find the subtle beginnings of what could be the day of the year. Try planning to hit the morning spinnerfall. It won't go your way every time, but when you do, it's a game of watching for station trout or watching the one or two trout in the run cruise and search, picking off green drake spinners adrift in the current. These late summer morning mayfly spinner falls are worth getting up for. While the filming can be rough and heavily contrasting light, drifting a likely spent wing pattern is usually met happily, and the day is off to a perfect start. It's all the better when you get these days when a good friend comes for a visit.
So it's early morning here and we're at a cutthroat trout stream and the water levels are really low now. It's uh, middle of August and we're kind of on the upper section of a, of a piece of water and water levels are super low. Um, these fish pretty much have to be in any flowing moving water unless they're searching and feeding and that's exactly where we found this cut. He's, uh, you can hear the little riffle over to my right here and it feeds into a nice little shelving riffle drop off and he's kind of in the lower end of it right now. He's just nymphing side to side, haven't seen him rise, but they're cutthroat and there's a real good chance he's gonna take a dry. So my setup right now is actually, I'm using my typical five weight. It's a nine foot five weight. And I've got about a 12 foot leader. I'm more comfortable in this really low water with going with a slightly longer leader. It's maybe even 12 and a half and I've stepped it down to 5x. Um, these fish, I'm sure they've seen a lot of flies this summer, so um, I am going with finer tippet, and I'm gonna use probably about a size 14 um, little um, mayfly emerger pattern that I have, um, that I've had some pretty good success on. So we'll see how it goes um, when it comes to my approach. I've got the sun actually, as you can see, kind of behind me, and so where this fish is sitting my preference would be to try to get below it and to be able to cast up to it instead of from the side because there's a real good chance that he'll see the shadow of my rod if i'm casting from the side so i'm going to try that we've got a big log jam here and we'll see if i can do it without stirring up a bunch of mud in this back eddy so my approach is that I'm not going to get any closer than this to the fish because I'm already maybe two and a half rod lengths and the water is so clear. But what I have to do is make sure that when I cast, I get my rod tip across this log and over so that I don't end up with any kind of drag. Yeah, he's right there. He rod length off that log. Yeah, He just popped up so fast and he hit that fly so hard and I set the hook and he wasn't there. So be it. Uh, honestly what we're going to do is just rest him for a bit. He'll come and eat again. Um, he's a cutthroat and good chance that I will get him. So what we've got here is a riffle leading into a log jam. And what happens is you get a well of water because the current comes in and hits and it kind of scours out and you get a well of water right along that whole log jam. And we've got a cutthroat that's just cruising in and out through there. 
and he hasn't come up lots but he's nymphing I do want to start out though I'm actually just using a medium sedge it's actually about a size uh, 10 and I'm just gonna see if he comes up to it um, it'll start start my drift actually in the faster current and we'll see if he comes and takes if not I'll just put on a dropper nymph Again, late summer and really low water. So what that means is the riffles are lower and your shoulder structure habitat is, you know, the water's dropped out and pretty much saying that the fish ain't gonna be anywhere but at least waist deep water with good good overhead cover, logs, a, a shelf, a, a, you know, shelving riffle, that kind of thing. We have all that in spades right here. Now there's two fish and the, the one is just booking it all over literally doing laps zip 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 up down up down and the other one is at the head shelf and he's just dropping back to feed so my goal is because i can see the smudges because i can see the, the shapes the one's a little bit darker and on the back because of the shadow has a kind of a blue or green back whereas the other one's kind of a coppery side i'm going to try to wait for the one that's cruising all over to drop to the tail out try to pick it off and wedge it back downstream to not avoid disturbing the upper one. And if all goes hopefully well, and I know this is way in advance, um, if it comes my way, then should be able to get the top one uh, on a dry fly as well, coming off that shelf. Uh, just again, going 12 foot liter, 5X, I could probably get away with four, but I wanna make sure I'm gonna get the take. And uh, just a little poly wing stimulator about a size 12 with rubber legs. Just something dainty that's going to land without a flack and just enough of a think on the water surface to get the fish's attention, come over, pop, and I'm hoping I can get the hook set on it and pull it this way. Let's go see how the plan works.
Okay, so definitely the, the one fish of the head rose, and as it rose, the one I caught dropped out into the eddy, came to the back end, and I actually let it, so it was a downstream taken away, and it just pushed that way, and then it button hooked, and I thought, well, it's a cutthroat in the middle of nowhere, so pitch it back up, and then it just came screaming up and pushing, and I was like, uh-oh, this isn't good, I've missed two, he just rose again. And then after the second miss, I thought, okay, let's get him in this choppy water where it's a little bit quicker in hopes that the fish wouldn't push in, in, in stagnant water. And that way he just came up and sucked in my fly instead of pushing it on the soft water, he actually just sucked it in on the dancy water. And as I was fighting it, sure as anything, I'm pulling this thing out. And just as I'm pulling that fish out of the tail out, the other fish is circling back to look and go, hey, what's going on? So I got out of there without too much problem and the other one is now risen twice again. So let's see if we can go after that one. So that was amazing. The fish was in the eddy on the other side and he was, he was, because it's shallow over there, his body and his shadow were tight together. I, as I cast, he rose up and I, and I lost sight of the body of the fish I was watching the shadow and I saw the shadow going deeper into the current no it was actually because the, the shadow was going deeper but the fish was going higher came and ate my dry fly but I was watching the shadow and I thought oh no I'm gonna have to cast again meanwhile I look up and the fish is already eating my dry fly so thankfully that last one proved to me that they're willing to eat once twice three times so let's see if uh Let's see if I can get past the dum-dum moves and actually watch my fly this time. Okay, so as I was saying on, on a different fish today, hey, everybody do themselves a favor to start learning how to smudge hunt and all that kind of stuff and learn how to sight fish. It's the bomb. It's the best thing ever. The problem with sight fishing is, okay, um, with cutthroat trout, you can see them and you can focus on them. But what happens in crystal clear water is you're watching them and again, that's twice in a row that that fish came up. And as it came up, its shadow went down and I thought I'm going to have to cast again. It's fooled me two casts in a row because I, I'm so keyed in on sight fishing instead of just watching my fly and watching the fish. So that's not good fishing. Um, let's see if I can correct it right here. Okay. He just hammered it. Yeah, though. so I, instead I overreacted because I was watching the fish and I broke it off. <laughs> oh man, hey. <laughs> okay, so um, it's the same fish There's uh, that keeps dropping out as the one that I broke off. And he's got my fly in his mouth, so he keeps looking at my beetle. He refused my beetle, he refused my mayfly merger. All this after he ate my small little uh, caddis stimulator thingy. So I'm gonna try to de-dumify this. You know, that's my dum-dum check, which I'm prone to do at least a couple times today or a day. And I'm just gonna uh, put a little tungsten, uh, tungsten bead hair's ear nymph on and just run that through and hopefully he'll take that because he keeps wanting to come up but I've pretty much taken care of the rise stuff with, uh, you know, giving him a fly in the mouth and a couple of refusals. So let's uh, let's see if I can get past myself and get him on the dropper nymph about 18 inches down. Just a small tungsten hair zero nymph with a couple strands of just pearlescent crystal flash as a tail. This is just a riffle run and I decided I need to prospect this. It's got some good broken rock in it, great water to hold a fish and truthfully I just put my fly up really at the head of it where there was the majority of depth and yep, cutthroat just comes up and smokes it. It was just a little medium sedge pattern, um, the classic cutthroat trout water that you want to catch a cutty in and yeah, beautiful fish.
So we found a fish here and he's holding in soft water right off the main current. And he's actually holding right behind a rock. Um, he's picked a spot that is the softest spot, but he's moving out to feed in the current. Whenever he sees something he wants, he just moves out to his right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get into the water here. I've gotta make sure that I get above. There's actually two seams. There's a closer seam in front of me and a further one. I gotta make sure that I get in position enough not so close to spook him but close enough that I can make sure I have a drag free drift and just pitch it out to him off his right because that's where he wants to feed a bit more into the current and we'll see if he comes and takes um, right now I'm using just a medium sedge nothing fancy um, there's a bit of a push of water here so I think I can get away with that I'm still going with 5x um, because it is low clear water um, towards the middle end of summer and these fish have been fished too so important to do that but uh, i think i have a good chance on this slightly larger fly Awesome when things actually go as you expect them to. Um, I got, I actually ended up standing in the seam that was closest to me because it wasn't really that fast nor that deep. And that way I definitely could get a drag free drift. And honestly, I got my cast going and two false casts on the water. And that's what I prefer to do. You don't want to have an, tons of false casts whenever you're trout fishing. Um, good chance to spook the fish. Um, by too much false casting and sometimes you just actually get out of rhythm so when you know you've got a good cast going get it on the water and that's what I did and I led the fish right where I said I wanted to and it's pretty thrilling when that happens right it's kind of a, a completion a whole success and yeah that fish just came over and he was going to take that dry fly no matter what
So as we came through the last bend, I was walking kind of, you know, thigh deep in the cold water in, in the shade and one, two, three green drakes, size, probably size eight, size 10, uh, kind of fluttering through there. I was like, okay, keep that in mind. And as we come around this corner, and this is a gorgeous long shelving riffle, broken rock at the head, slow taper into a bucket. Yes, the, the bucket is kind of sandy with a bunch of, I, guess, I, I call it detritus, it's just a bunch of organic matter, sticks and needles and that kind of stuff sitting on the bottom. Um, the fish, no interest in the back end, but as I'm here, I saw one, two drakes in the shade over there, and I was like, okay. So on goes the big green drake pattern. Uh, nothing special um, and literally just work it up left right left right left right going up that nice gravelly uh, rocky shelf and boop 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 what was that four or five fish just like that lickety split and that's really cutthroat fishing it's four o'clock in the afternoon mid-august we were looking forward to this run all day and with green drake starting to pop we were anticipating some solid surface eats I wasn't anticipating a big brown bat to be welcoming me to the run. As it turns out, cutthroat trout aren't the only predators keyed into the dray catch. It took pity on me and flew into the forest, and once it did, it was full magic. Traveling around the world, my feet will tell me where to go. I'm not afraid to step outside and see the world for what it is now. Spending all my time with people that I barely know You may have thought that I was lost But all I need is room to grow I'm coming home to put a flower in your hand But you should know there ain't no place I'd rather be instead
So that was a neat fish. Uh, the truth is that before we uh, had the camera on, I had pitched it into the seam line and I watched this fish come up and I was like, uh oh, Amelia's not filming. And I, you know, we always like to try to show what we're doing and that kind of thing. I, before I could just kind of pop and flip, the fish came and smacked it. The cutthroat are really fast eaters in this water. So I, I stuck him and then he, and I kind of lowered the pressure on the barbless hook. It fell off, no problem. And then, of course, now you have a project. <laughs> and the project is, okay, not going to come out to the same fly. I pitched it back in there and he kind of looked at it and went back down deep. Try to drake, try to PMD, no, no, but I wanted them to dry fly. So I just pulled out the big foam black thing, kind of looks like a Sawyer beetle, uh, kind of a forest insect about an inch, inch and a half long. And yeah, that thing just, I pitched it into the top of the run, drift, and I could see the shadow on the bottom turn while I was fishing. And I knew it was coming, so I just left it. And this time I kept watching my dry fly rather than watching the dark shadow. And sure enough, he just came up and sucked in that big foam thing so um, even though with cutthroat in the backcountry even though you might have hooked them uh, you know what even the ones that you lose give it a bit of time um, they tend to forget things early <laughs> and they're fairly forgiving so have a go rest it try different things and even if you think well oh, I have to go small 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 sometimes something big 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 will get them to come off uh, the bottom up five feet and suck it in